The secrets and lies people hide have a way of revealing themselves eventually. Now stay glued for these thrilling and shocking moments as no stone is left unturned in a case where a secret that's been kept for 40 years is unveiled and could play a part in determined paternity. These are cases of shocking dirty secrets on Paternity Court. I, I met Mr. Fagan here when I was 16 years old. Never heard nothing about him. And then all of a sudden, one day, my mom decided to take me with her to a friend's house. My mom calls me to the dining room. She goes, I want you to meet somebody. By the way, this is your father. Mr. Fagan's in court with a defendant to prove that he's her biological father, a secret that's been kept for 40 years. But the defendant is without doubts that he's not her biological father and only knew one man to be your dad. Megan, you're here to prove that Miss Pinkston is your biological daughter. Yes, yeah. You claim you kept this secret for, f but now say the DNA will prove your case. Right, yeah. Uh, Miss Pinkston, you stand before me without any doubt. That Mr. Fagan and the man who raised you is. Yes, ma'am. He claimed to have had an affair with her mom when she was married to her father. Now, consequently, she became pregnant and insisted that it should be kept a secret. We worked together at a plant. We got to know each other You spent a lot of time together. A lot of time Because you worked together. a lot of hours together. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, did you know she was married? And told me that she was pregnant. Told when me. she told you, did she say, and I think you are the father? She or you might be? I was the father. And she told me, we're going to keep this a secret. Well, it didn't. We knew we had to be quiet because she was married. This other gentleman, the man Miss Pinkston believes is her biological father, would raise Miss Pinkston as his own. The consequences of her actions made this life-altering secret come to light when Miss Pinkinson was 16 because they presumed that she was dating a man who turned out to be Mr. Vegan's relative who could potentially be her cousin. Now, she says that she's been forced to keep it a secret. They told me that Kenny was my father. The only reason why was because my mom thought I was dating one of his family members, his family member. Oh, and so they felt like they needed to tell you because you were dating your cousin. Yes. Ten years old, you were called upon to keep this secret as well? Yes. And you had to. You never Your spoke Honor, a word no. of it. insisted that this stay between us and her when we told her. It's pretty heartbreaking that her dad passed on without knowing the truth, and the regret that she feels is devastating. Now, she's certain about who her father is because her birth certificate was signed by the man she grew up to know as her biological father. From 16 to 27, uh, never telling Mr. Pinkston none of this. Do you regret not telling? I, uh, I, I do. I felt like if they had enough of birth, your father's name is listed as Gus Pinkston Jr. Correct. That's my father. I could have. Uh, brought this out, but due to her wishes, being married, which is wrong, we did this, Your Honor. However, the defendant's sister believes the secret should have been kept hidden, no matter the circumstances. Well, it's not fair on Miss Pinkins's part because she deserves to know. I mean, it's been this long. I really didn't were part of. My mom was a good woman. My dad was awesome. If it was a secret, it should have stayed a secret. You should have just left it alone. Family that didn't know that know. Now, this means a lot to Mr. Fegan, because if it turns out to be true, she'll be his only surviving kid. Well, it's time to know the status of the situation, because the results is in. Mr. Fagan. Yes. Yes. Are not oh. her father. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh. In a quest to find her biological father, Ms. Bully Jack and her mom are in court to seek answers as she learns that Mr. Smith could be her biological father. However, Mr. Smith is in denial because he knew the life her mom had led during the times that they were together. Recently appeared in court to help resolve a paternity dispute for your sister. This motivated you to get the answers you've desperately been searching for for three decades. Your mother has always told you the defendant, Mr. Smith, is your biological father, and you hope today's results prove she's right. Mr. Smith, you say it's admirable that Ms. Bolijak believes her mother, but you say you knew the life Ms. Common was living and are absolutely sure you are not the father. Is that correct? Yes, you are. Now, the hurt she feels is kind of sad. Growing up without knowing who her father is and her kids not knowing their grandpa has been pretty tough for her. I've had a number of emotions, anger, um, hurt, resentment, not knowing who my father was, growing up with other kids with their fathers and me not having a father. And even into adulthood, my children question who their grandfather is and I can't give an, a, a clear answer. Mr. Smith says that he's certain that he's not the biological father because of the life that her mom had led. 
He says that she was living a life, but that doesn't justify anything. Finally, Ms. Common spews that there could be another man in the picture who could be a possible father. I don't believe so. She don't favor none of my kids, you know what I mean? So, and then the mama, she was out there living the life. Uh, hold up, baby. I was not out there living the life. When me and you were together, baby, it was just me and you. It was like summer love. It was just me and you. We was together. <laughs> it was summer love, baby. It was me and you. Right now, that there is a possibility that someone else is the daughter's biological yes. father. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Because at the time when it was summer love with Mr. Smith... I was still going back to my ex. After you got done with him because he was acting up... Right. ...when the summer love turned cold. Right. Yeah. After learning that he could be the possible father, he did the most unthinkable by reaching out to Ms. Bully Jack when she was 12 years old through a phone call and gave her the assurance that she can reach out anytime she wants, but the number was unreachable. Now, why give the little girl hope like that? Your Honor, I spoke with him once when I was 12. He called the phone. He told me that he was my father. So it's surprising today that he does not have any recollection or anything. But um, when I spoke to him when I was 12, he told me he was my father. He gave me a phone number that I can contact him back on. Two days later, I tried to contact him. The phone was disconnected. Ms. Common revealed that she had sex with her ex the same day she was intimate with Mr. Smith. Now, this brings two men as potential fathers, but she's, however, certain because Mr. Bully Jack looks like one of his relatives. And I went back to my ex. I had sex with him the same day I went back with him. And I didn't find out I was pregnant until a month later after that. But I had sex with both of them on the same day. Okay, so <laughs> that is what a paternity issue yeah. is made of. That's why I said I don't know for sure if it's really Rob or... And so how did you just uh, decide it was Mr. Smith? Well, because she looks exactly like his family members. She looked exactly like him. What about she my other like kids? Him. I got other kids. I know you got other kids by other mothers. I'm saying who she yeah. looks like. She looks just like your family members. You even admitted it yourself. Now, the hopes can't be guaranteed without the paternity results. So grab your seats as the results are revealed. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Smith, you are not the father. <clears throat> I'm very sorry. Very, very sorry, Lorraine. I was hoping to be able to give you the closure you need and deserve. Ms. Common, I have to ask you, does that mean your daughter's father is your ex-boyfriend or is that's... there someone else? No, there's no one else. It was just them two, so. Ms. Kavanaugh and her mother show up in court to prove paternity. Now, she admits to having cheated on Mr. Bowles with another man, but she's confident that he's the biological father of her son. Now, Mr. Bowles said that he's certain that he's a biological dad. Ms. Kavanaugh, you and your mother are appearing in court today to prove paternity of your three-week-old son, Malcolm. You claim his biological father is Mr. Bowles. Yes, Your Honor. Her justification for cheating on him is to make him jealous. Now, she was intimate with another man because she wanted a serious relationship and wanted to prove it to Mr. Bowles that somebody else could actually want her and care for her. I mean, you can see what her drastic actions are led her to. I wanted to be in a serious relationship with Mr. Bowles, and I felt like he didn't respect me and didn't care about my feelings. So, yes, I did have one encounter with Mr. McElliott, but I felt like I wanted to do that to make him jealous because I want him to see that somebody else wants me and maybe he would want me, which is a very immature and childish way of thinking. I now know that because it didn't work at all. The reason why he had doubts was she had lied to him about being pregnant, but she says the reason behind that was to keep him. But surprisingly, she got pregnant a few weeks after pulling that stunt on him. That is true. The way that I found out that I was truly pregnant with my son is because I was very childish when I was talking to Mr. Rolls. Like, I really cared about him and I desperately wanted him to care about me because we were with each other basically every other night, if not every night. He was coming to my house. Like, he lived about 30 minutes away, worked about 30 minutes away, was always coming to see me. He gave me the wrong impression, really. So when I did childishly try to fake a pregnancy test, I went to the store, got a pregnancy test, was going to take two negatives, turn it into a positive, and when, yes. Take two negatives and turn it into a positive. Yeah, crack them open and turn them into a positive. Oh, and put two of the, the, the lines together. So you had a plan to pretend you were pregnant yes. in order to keep him. And then what happened? Well, I took both of the tests, Your Honor, and I went to go eat, and I came back and they were both positive. Oh. Wow. That's your person. 
Now, the other man is willing to step up and sign the birth certificate without a DNA test, but she, however, wants her kid to know his biological father. She told Mr. McElliot that the baby's ultrasound looked like his mom. From the looks of things, she wanted him to be the father. He actually told me he didn't want to do a DNA test, and he would actually sign the birth certificate and didn't care if he was the father and wanted to be with me. Even if he did that, I would still want my son to know who his true blood father is because everybody deserves Sure of an ultrasound. I also have that um, with me. You do? Let me yes. see that, please. Thank you. Um, Aw. I looked at the ultrasound. Uh, she actually, she told me that the ultrasound actually resembled my mother. But a shocking revelation comes to limelight when she admits to having an affair with another man, which she said to have been a one-night stand. Now, this puts forward three potential dads. Or something that was included in this? Yes. Okay. That's I true, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, no, nah, it's true. That's true, Your Honor. A third party? Yes, Your mm -hmm. Honor. Please elaborate on the third party. It was a very drunken night, and it was a one-night stand. Do you remember whether you used protection or not? No. That's why I think it may be another person, but I'm not quite sure. So let's check the results and find out who that baby daddy. In the case of Kavanaugh v. Bowles McElliott, pertaining to whether Mr. Bowles or Mr. McElliott is the father of three-week-old Malcolm Kavanaugh, Mr. McElliott, you are not his father. Mr. Bowles, you are not his father. <laughs> Calm down. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to put you guys through all that. From shocking revelations to fiery confrontations and unexpected twists, y'all, get ready to witness the most outrageous moments that defy all expectations on paternity court where a 36-year-old woman got the shock of her life when she was told during a family funeral that another man may be her biological dad. Now, these are some of the outrageous moments on paternity court. I double dating, more like double dipping y'all, is biting back hard on this mom. That's cause her daughter's dragging her ass to court in search of who her father is. Now she led her daughter to believe the man who raised her was her dad. They tell me the truth about who my father really is to be and that my mother has been lying to me for the past years of my life, which was time was 14 years old, and that the man at the time was not my father. She said to me, I want you to take it to your grave if your mother never owns up and tell you yourself. And I said, okay. And I felt that it was the truth because I always felt like I was adopted. My father, he really never really showed me the affection, the love at all. She wasn't sure who the father was because she had sex with another guy right before she found out she was pregnant. Oh boy. Now confronting her mom back then didn't do her any good. And she kept trying to dodge the answers. I was just waiting so, for you to tell me the truth. She admitted that that was true. She admitted But gave you a third name. Yes, Your Honor. Why? Well, actually, Your Honor, I knew one day that I would have to sit up real down and talk to her and let her know who her father is. The time that I set forth for her was at the age of 16. At but the age of 16. All right, so everything she just said was true, right? But it doesn't negate the fact that she needed a dad, right? Everybody needs a good, strong male figure in their life, right? And her mom can't be all of that, right? She's a mom, and the mom's got to understand that. You did not want to go to father and daughter dance. I, I want... didn't have a father to go to a with. I feel like she making this be more than what it but, is. But no, 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 no. Now, Miss Hall, before you start minimizing, you got to listen to your daughter because she's telling you what she feels. This was an event that everybody I knew got to go to. It's called the father-daughter dance. And I, it, when she said it, my heart dropped to my feet because I've been to the father-daughter dance. So check this madness out right now. Her efforts yielded results as she would go on to find him. Now, it turns out he was in prison. So she wrote letters to him while he was in prison. But get this horse crap, right? He replied, but she never got the responses. Now, she's about to see that for the very first time in the courtroom. He does state he's willing to be the father she needs and deserves. And it's signed Kurt. And Your Honor, I know you may not understand how I feel about this right here, but that's where I feel like I was deceived in cross be because I had my time that I had set aside to do the right thing. She and wants me to be like, I'm the bad person, regardless of 
someone else having to come to tell me about one of the supposed dads is here to testify he's also doubtful that he's a dad now this is because when he found out she was pregnant she was also in a relationship with somebody else too starting to sound like another dumb cumpster y'all uh so you're saying she told you she was pregnant you thinking to yourself it could easily be someone else not me of course the way it went down when she told me that she knew that the lifestyle that i was living it was fast i got i was making money fast i had a lot of women coming at me saying oh i'm pregnant i'm pregnant and then only just to want money uh to spend it on whatever and just I say oh i need the money I never for abortion for any money i'm not saying she's asking me she never asked me have i asked you for any money right. all right so he revealed that he was told definitely by a mutual friend of theirs that he was not the dad and 14 years later there's a letter in the mail saying hey you got a kid along with a picture well that's one hell of a way to find out right one would expect him not to take it too well i guess the years must have softened his heart he was in prison. You got a letter from him. Yes. And then I did. you wrote him back. Yes. Explain to me wh he, what happens in that relationship. He wanted to know little things about me so he can get to know me through the letters. He promised me when he come home, he'll do things with me that he's never done. When he got home, he didn't do none of that and he still haven't done none of that. I was trying to help him get out of the halfway house so he can come home and spend time with me. But he didn't want to do all that. He wanted to break everything that he said, spend less time with me so he can be with her. That's all they really care about. All right, that's just outrageous, right? One minute she thinks she finally found her dad not knowing he was using her to get back with her mom and to also pass time while in prison having someone to talk to. Now that's just distasteful. It was not just a pastime. When, of course, when a, when a child that may be yours, you want to know, you want to build a relationship. When you're not incarcerated and you're trying to get back into society, you're trying to work. Uh, your but times are I, conflicting. When she goes to school. Club, I have to work. To help you get were a job? you telling what me, you Curtis, doing? I may or may not be your father? What were you saying? Because I have a letter here that says. I'm willing to be the father that she needs and she deserves. Your Honor, when he first got out of prison, he went to the halfway house. The purpose of me trying to get him a job with my mom. This young lady doesn't deserve all these people in her life, man. Now, I hope the results favor her and everyone can be at peace. Now, according to him, her mom's not making the acceptance easy for him, and she's still singing that he might not be the dad whenever she wants to be disrespectful. You are her father. When all you think about is how your girl faked DNA tests for her four-year-old son, it's only right for you to be skeptical AF, man. Hopefully Judge Lauren Lake settles that for this dude. You are in court to prove that you are not the biological father of the defendant's four-year-old son, Kevin. You say that while you were away, Ms. Mahoney was having sexual relationships with two different men, and either of them could be the father. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Mahoney, you say you are 99.999% sure that Mr. Watson is the father and deny his accusations of infidelity. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Watson, you say today's results will determine the future of your relationship. I'd say it's pretty safe to say that their damn relationship's on the line here. Now, if these results don't turn out the way that he wants, that marriage is out the window. Man, talk about edging all your bets against the paternity test results. Sheesh. Okay, we're gonna try to use respectful language, but you, you, let's say she had a reputation of being very promiscuous. Yes, yes, sure. Okay, and so you were away and you came home. What did you find when you came home? She had two men staying with her and they were showering her, showering her with gifts and taking care of her. Now, me as a man, personally, I'm not gonna do that for no woman. Being a man, though, you should have left. I never left. Now, I don't know if there are any real tears or crocodile tears here, right? Now, the question is, why is the other guy claiming to be the dad? Now, her reason was that he provided for the son when he was away. All right, that's fair, right? But there's a difference between a father and a dad. I mean, we can't fault her if the other guy doesn't know that, though. Because I just found out they had sexual intercourse under a bridge, okay? Under a bridge. Did you have sex with this friend, Mr. Don't Watt? lie. No, Your Honor, no, I did not. Not sex. What did she do? Be honest, because this is our chance to clear our water and make our family either complete or separate. I did not have sexual relations with that woman in any kind. <laughs> we 
With the whole accusations going back and forth and him refusing to name the kid, she went and took a DNA test. The test result says 99.9% .9%, which got him on the birth certificate, but he doesn't believe it and still denies the baby. I don't know why and we were together and they showed up. If you're confident, why wouldn't you take a sealed envelope to Mr. Watson? and say, this is the paperwork. But, Your Honor, we have been through so much and spent so much in our life. I never expected him to think of me that low I to do that. Do That's that, low but... of a person. So you never thought he would question paternity? <sighs> Ever. Uh, they're documented government papers. When your I'm... friend's forging <laughs> papers, what do you want me to do? My friend, she forged DNA. All right, so he brought his mom mom as a witness, and holy shit, does she have a lot to say. Situation. <sighs> Well, I heard the rumors when they were when it first came about. I, I'm confused also what, what what all has been said and what's all going on. But did you ever hear this information about papers being forged, yeah. DNA papers? You yes, heard that? Yes, she knew her too. Yes, ma'am. And I did not care for her. All right, it's outrageous to know that they've been at this for four freaking years, man. Like it's been hanging over their heads. She revealed that they fight about just about everything, right? And she's not proud of it and wants answers now. Maybe if there wasn't a chance that you lied your ass off about who the baby daddy is, he wouldn't find a reason to fight. Just saying, Bianca. There's another man that could potentially be Kevin's biological father. No, ma'am. <laughs> And I, are there any other men? No, ma'am, I have, we have broken up and I've had other, you know, relationships with men, but never around when I got pregnant. <laughs> to Mr. Watson, it's either the kid is his or it ain't. Like he's ready to make it work if the kid is his and it would want no part in their life if the kid isn't. There ain't no in between for this dude. When it comes to four year old Kevin Watson, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Watson, you are the father. See? Well, it seems you can never be too old to have paternity issues over, right? That's the story of a 36-year-old woman whose paternity is now shrouded in some doubts. So this started with a text. Mm -hmm. So after um, almost two years of reaching out to my father after uh, visiting him in 2015, I um, was pleading to get him to respond. He wasn't responding. And he finally responded with this message. He revealed that it started way before, and it was when she was born. I, mean, I don't even know, right? Maybe he decided to play daddy and is now tired of doing it. Her auntie downstairs let me in. I walked upstairs. I didn't knock on the door. I looked in. I see this guy sitting on the couch with her, like he running this game to get up on something. I knocked on the door. I said, what's going on? His reasons are still based on promiscuity, right? The question is, why take that long to bring it up? Miss Miller had no doubt that he was the father when she got pregnant. Surprisingly, she claims that he was the one that told her she was pregnant when she conceived. Of course, he denied ever doing that, though. But they start sending start? me checks back for overpayment. 1700 800 1000 500 So how come overpaid. you didn't take send, that send, $100,000, oh, and, and me. pay for a DNA test when I, before I turned 36 years I'll old? I'll tell you, I, hey, well, I'll tell what? you why. I have, an, I have an answer for you. Your Honor, I got a birth certificate right here saying that. What do you see? Let me see that, Jerome. This birth certificate says what, sir? To her, maybe the doubts were over. He chose to be part of her life and did everything for her. So what exactly changed? When the judge asked what it was like for the daughter, she got really emotional. <laughs> I was devastated. She I was. felt like he was taking my identity away from me because I've always known I was a Langston. No problem. And no problem. I have so much about my father. When he came back into my life when I was an adult, <laughs> it was like a piece of the puzzle was missing. While he claimed that his intentions were never to hurt her, we can't deny that it's gonna hurt anybody, right? We also can't overlook the fact that he's felt these doubts all along and just decided to look at it with a clear lens now. My eyes were buck like this on that plane all the way to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ms. Garnett, the court noticed during, amidst all of this confusion, you began to post on Facebook. 
Mm -hmm. You put this post up. Can you please step up to the uh, plasma and tell the court why you posted this? So, um, after the text message, I did some soul searching. I was just laying in my bed looking through my phone and I saw a picture of myself. All right, so with Langston still adamant with his doubts, the result is the only tiebreaker here. So let's check out that result. Mr. Langston, you are not the father. He claims that she scammed him into paying child support on her 22-year-old daughter and also claims they use protection at all times so there ain't no way that he could be the baby daddy. You, 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 you file child support against me when I don't have, you don't have proof. I have never signed a birth certificate. I've never been pro uh, proven that I was the father of the child. Were you, were you having a sexual relationship with Miss Smith wh during the time the child was conceived? I don't know. I don't know. You don't even know. I don't know because All I right. we, we so... seen each other and we was having sex with each other, but. All right, he revealed that his payment had been garnished and that was how he found out that he had been placed on child support for a kid he had nothing to do with. We met at a club. Yes, we met at a club. We ain't do nothing the first night. I mean, but we went out that weekend. I, I picked him up. Oh I took God. him home. But why? I paid why? for Why? You food. knew more about me than I knew about he you. He was my best friend. But yeah. the only time Eli had money is when he got into that car accident. Oh. He got mad at me because I didn't show up at the hospital. This is why he I is so good. I never got mad at nobody. Years. I never got mad at nobody. Miss Smith, you say this was a real relationship. Yes, ma'am, it was. There you go, right there. You all were boyfriend and girlfriend? Yes. No. All right, so he feels that she scammed him, and to her, they were in a relationship. Now, talk about two different opinions here, night and day, right? His claims that he always uses protection were quickly shot down by her. Now, he couldn't be bothered about being called out on that. He stuck to his story that there was, you know, foul play, and he was trapped into it. How much you want to bet? So is the reason why you're behind $36,000 because you just refuse to beg? Because if the child support office hears you talk about how much money you got, they gonna wonder why well, this I isn't paid. Because I don't believe this is my child. So you purposely have avoided paying because you don't believe it's your I child. I don't believe it's my child. The daughter in question hasn't been seen by him in years, so it's time to see her for her testimony. Five, he called me. That's all I remember. Just when you were five? Yes. But since then, you don't remember anything? No. You have not seen him? No. No birthdays? No. Father's Day? No. Holiday? No. Nothing? No. By the time that was probably having this fight when the child supposed to hit me. All right, so Clarissa revealed that he's missed out on a lot in her life. She didn't have a father figure and there was no one there to support her. I don't know, but we'll find out today. When you, when you were a baby, that's what I remember. Okay, and after that, I don't remember nothing else either. I'm about as bad as how you feeling. I feel bad too, but the thing is, I can't change that. What it is from now on, we can move forward or keep living in the past. It would be totally up to everybody in the, in, in, in the circle right here. Me and your mother never had a relationship. We were friends, good friends, that's about it. So is he the dad or isn't he the dad? Is it gonna turn out that she's his or not? Find out next time on Paternity Court. Mr. Williams, you, are her father. Thank you. Brace yourself for the jaw-dropping lies and deceitful tactics. A man's ready to unmask his cheating wife as he's tired of living a lie and is ready to break free. A woman who had two lovers is certain her fiance is her kid's father, while her ex insists that he could have fathered her two-month-old daughter. Watch as paternity uncovers these master manipulators. Mr. Broussard, you opened your case hoping the court will grant you a paternity test so you can prove you are not the father of four-month-old baby Charles. You say your one-year marriage to the defendant is on the verge of collapse because of paternity doubt, and you need this test to save your family. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, she claims his refusal to accept the paternity of her son has left her in shambles and also claims that he's got no reason to deny that he's her son's father. Now, is she right or not? Let's dive in and find out. I say my marriage is on the verge of collapse due to the infidelity, the trust issues, and all the evidence, coincidence that I discovered. And you need this test today because you, you're on the birth certificate. Yes, I am. You are this child's legal father. Yes, yes, I am. But you need this test so desperately because if you are not the biological father of this child, you want to have your name removed from this birth certificate. 
As sad as it might sound, that's a bit of a fair bargain, right? She claims that he's obsessed with her ex and that he feels like she's cheating on him every time she does something. Now, there have also been rumors in the neighborhood that he's not the kid's father. Well, that explains that. Answer the question. No. You don't. And why is that? Everything I've found out, everything I've been through. You submitted a chart to the court? Yes. Concerning how you have come to not trust your wife? Yes. Please step over to the exhibit and explain it to the court. Okay, so she says she didn't know? Like, what was she thinking, right? She claimed that they were just cups and she had poured those cups for a family member that had come over to her house who was taking medications. So why didn't she say that when he asked? I don't want to start an argument about having someone in the house. If it's a family member, why do you have to say, I don't know? Why lie? That's what I was because thinking. Because you do know who's in the house. <laughs> All right, let's go to number two. It's been number two. This is more towards the end of the month. And basically, we got an energy drink in there. I don't drink energy drinks. She don't drink energy drinks. Our kids don't drink them. All right, you want to talk about ridiculous, the third exhibit was the rumors, right? Now, it appears that a kid had come to tell him that his wife and her ex-boyfriend were still communicating and they had plans on pushing him out of the picture. Man, that's the thing about kids. They'll tell it the way it is. He never told me a child told him anything, but my ex was going around spreading rumors to make him upset. So did you ever confront this ex, Mr. Broussard? Oh, I did. He basically pointed the finger back at Helen. And what did he say? Her about it. She basically telling me that she's not entertaining him. She answers little questions. It's real minor. When I talk to him, he's saying it's major. She's sexing him. She claimed that she hasn't been in touch with her ex, but they did talk a couple of times the year before. The fourth exhibit appears to be an eggplant. Helen was, uh, I believe, in the living room watching TV on one of my days off from work, and her phone went off, so I vibrated, you know, flashing and dingling. In the corner of my eye, I see a, a gentleman taking a picture with his, with his gentleman in his hand, sending it to my wife. So her ex basically sent a naked photo? Yes. Because this is from the ex? Yeah. She admitted that her ex sent her a naked picture. Now, she claimed she told him not to, but he still did. Well, she could have blocked his number if she wasn't interested. Yes. I was away, and once I returned home, uh, I seen Helen in the shower, and she had like handprints on her thighs, her her buttocks, and not handprints like you could see handprints. Like he was slapping her lower half. So basically, uh, she stepped out the shower. She told me like I slept with him. Without shame, she admitted telling him that she slept with her ex. Now, she tried to justify it, saying she'd slept with him after his ex had called her, telling her that they were having an affair. So it was just all for revenge. Who say this happened in August? Yes. No, it happened in December. And the baby was born in April? Yes. All right. So that would put that right around the window of conception. So, Ms. Broussard, you said it was a different time? Yes. When did you say it was? December. Oh, you said it wasn't August, it was no. December. I cheated on Charles when I was five and a half months pregnant. <laughs> Ew. Man, it just keeps on getting worse. Like, how can you comfortably cheat on someone while you're pregnant with somebody else's kid? She claims that she doesn't understand why he would doubt the paternity of the baby. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of reasons why he should doubt the paternity of that baby. It's like her ex? Yes, he do. <laughs> no, he doesn't. It's just messed up that an innocent child got put in the middle of it. I just want confirmation. I just want to be set at ease. Like, if this is my child, I can move forward and be the proper father and be at my best potential in his life. Well, hearing the testimony today and the fact that there have been several instances that could lead to potential doubt surrounding Charles's paternity, I believe this court has heard sufficient evidence. They both submitted to DNA and testing, and we're finally going to find out whether or not she's telling the truth this time. Determined by this court, Mr. Broussard, you are the father. How does it feel to hear that? Uh, I feel a lot more better. 
about the um, the results, I still got love for him. As far as me and Helen go, you know, we have to work on our marriage and our differences. Pretty happy that um, this is my biological. In this episode of Paternity Court, a man summoned his ex-girlfriend to court to prove that he's the father of her baby. He believes she's worried her family will be torn apart if he turns out to be the dad. Ms. Bracknell, you say there's no way Mr. Butterfield is your child's father. The only reason why he's doing this is to break up the family you now have with your fiance, Mr. Dallas. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Butterfield, why do you believe Carr is your daughter? Um, me and uh, Mrs. Bracknell had a residence together for almost a year. Um, we did try to, you know, have a baby together before. Okay, so you lived together? Yes, we did. And you were in a relationship? When they were breaking up, she thanked him for the gift he gave her. But he was confused. It wasn't until later on he found out that she was preggers. She hid this for me eight months. Hid my daughter from me for eight months. And wasn't there for her to be born. Yeah, he, some other guy got to cut, cut her umbilical cord. Yeah, that's fine. Make me out to be the jerk, whatever. Can I'm here today. Do you want to be or here? Something. So, Ms. Bracknell, you were previously in a relationship with Mr. Butterfield. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I was. Then you went back in a relationship with Mr. Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you have three other children together. Yes, we do. Now, when you left Mr. Butterfield, now she claimed she didn't find out she was pregnant until three months after she moved out of his house because she was having irregular periods. She also believes that she wasn't pregnant at the time that they broke up. You believe yes, you're her biological father? Yes, Your Honor. He is. Why do you believe no, he's not. so? If I may, the evidence. Oh, yes. August. Let me see that evidence. August, her and Jesse split up. September, we was together. together. Moved we in. were. So this calendar outlines yeah. August the dates. Mr. Butterfield split up. When the relationship with Mr. Butterfield so, and Ms. Bracknell ended, and when she came back to you. Yeah. So, in the middle of you say Carl was conceived in mid-September and she was born in June. June. Yes, ma'am. And she ended the relationship with Mr. Butterfield at the end of August, am I correct? Yes. Mr. Butterfield doesn't agree with the calendar. It appears that they were still sleeping together even after she'd moved. Now, he was sure, right? So he told the court he wouldn't mind taking a lie detector test to prove it. Uh, this is getting interesting. She used to, she, sorry, I'm not meaning to interrupt. She used to work for a, uh, an auto parts store, and she would call me and be like, hey, let's have a quickie, let's do this, and then she'd go back <laughs> on her little... Oh, really? So, no, that right there is all a lie. So you're saying I'd she be was still sleeping a... with you in October? Yeah. I'd be willing to take a lie detector test, would you? Yeah, I would, actually. Mm. Let's do it. Oh, I'm scared. You know, I think the paternity results in this case will give us all we need. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, so there is a lot at stake today because Ms. Bracknell and Mr. Dallas, you have a family. You have how many other children yeah. together? We have four kids counting cars. Four No, you kids have three kids. Car. No, including... he is done. No, so you have... Now he sounds hurt and he really wants the kid to be his. Mr. Dallas explained that he would still raise and love the kid like his even if she turns out not to be his. It's beautiful to know that they both want to be there for her. Mr. Butterfield, this That's a Facebook is. post that they posted on um, that the baby was even. That's before I even knew. It and says, then, this little the, girl is ready. Yep, that little girl is ready right there. And then I also, the only thing I got was a text message from, like, of a friend saying of her sister holding my daughter. And the that's hospital. the only way you knew about this pregnancy? Otherwise, you knew nothing about it? No. There's no reason She hid all of her pregnancies. She even hid the one from... She, um, her no, youngest I didn't. son, Carson, she hid from him. No, I he didn't. wasn't even at her, her youngest. Now, based on what Mr. Butterfield said, she basically operates a pattern where she hides pregnancies. And just when you think it can't get any worse, he revealed that she cheated on him on his damn birthday. Cara has been born. Have you tried to be in her life, Mr. Butterfield? I have, actually, I've messaged, when I found out about it, I've messaged her mom, let him know I was coming. I blocked, obviously, on their That page, you were coming? Right? You let's were, you let's were explain that text message. You guys even got together. Five seconds after I yeah. posted that, he texted my mom saying, I'm coming, I'm coming to get that girl. Oh, Just all, so all threats. Well, if I want to be in my daughter's life, why okay, wouldn't I be? Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that if she is your daughter, but we'll see. It, well, yes, we were, we'll see right we'll see. today, we won't will. we? That's why yeah. we're here. Let's get it. She claimed that she and Mr. Butterfield never slept together again after they broke up. She also claimed she was not intimate with anyone else during that time. Well, we're going to find out soon.
She looks more like me. Even her own family says it. Her own family even tells they ain't me. Family. <laughs> they look like me. She's got my nose. She's got my lips. We'll see. She's got my brown hair. We'll see. All her boys are blonde. All their boys are blonde. Yep, Doesn't and they've matter. gone brown the older they get. Exactly. So you are convinced, Mr. Butterfield, this is your dog. Oh, I'm 100% convinced. So he believes the only reason she wants Mr. Dallas to be the kid's father is because she doesn't want to have two different baby daddies. Well, hopefully his hunch is right. Kara's biological father is Mr. Butterfield. That's fate. What did I tell you? It's fate. What did I tell you? The only thing worse than a liar is a liar that's also a hypocrite. A man brought a woman to court to prove that he's not the father to her 17-month-old daughter. You say you moved her into your home, laid out the red carpet, only to find out she was rolling around with other men in your home. Is that correct? Yes. Man, that's some audacity she's got right there. Although he welcomed her into the world and signed her birth certificate, she claims that he's turned his back on her daughter, and this denial is hurting her and her kid. I have been going down this rodeo for far too long. I signed on a birth certificate. Um, I'm I'm not there physically. I just can't handle it because she just just no consistency. I just want I just want the answers today so I can just have closure. So, Mr. Wilson, you saying you've been fooled once, you've been fooled twice, but you're not gonna be fooled again. Correct, Your Honor. She claims they'd planned the baby and they also had concessions. Concessions? Man, I'm confused. Was on my Facebook page, liking my comments so and was, you my, was my pictures, boo. So and she she hit me up like, "What you up to?" and this, that, and the other. And at the time, I was taking care of my stepfather, had my own house, car, working, things of that nature. And because I had previous relationships with her in the past, I was single, she was single. We decided to meet up, and we met up, and um, we actually planned the baby. The baby was just not a coincidence. I asked so her could she have, have a baby for me that you planned because. I, she knew what I've been through in the past with not having kids and how desperately I wanted to have a kid. The sad thing is that he doesn't see himself in the baby, but he sees her ex in the baby. She had once posted a Facebook picture of the baby and the ex, and the baby looked more like the ex. At my period in February, we conceived in March. You feel me? When you found out you were pregnant... I called him. He was acting like he was happier than two Jaybirds. All right, so you called Mr. Wilson and he was happy. Yes, and then when the baby came out, you couldn't tell him that that wasn't his kid at all. Okay. He was at the birth and he even cut the umbilical cord. He signed the birth certificate and at that time, he didn't have any doubts. Well, we're trying to build a relationship while she's pregnant. And in the mix of us building a relationship, she's getting bigger. She's whispering, I hear echoes. She's always in a different room of the apartment. And I'm like, why are you never around the kids? Why? She's like, I can't talk now because my, my ex is here. And why is he there at 11 o'clock at night if the kids got school in the morning? And he knew exactly what was going on and with that other guy. He just don't want to take responsibility and be a man and stand up. He came over to visit. He is lying. He came he over to visit. He visited 30 days? He came. He lied. It wasn't 30 days. How was it 30 days when we was having... All right, so this dude claims that there was something about the relationship between her and her ex that made him start feeling like the kid wasn't his. Half doubt until she's told me I didn't have sex with him. He's just laying on the couch. Okay, I went with that. When I ran and saw him at the bus stop, I said, this is coincidence. Now I can man up and ask him face to face. What's the story in his end? If it add up to what she's telling me, then I have no doubts. But he said the complete opposite of what she's given me. And I asked him, I said, if y is y'all having a child together? He's like, yeah. I said, what y'all supposed to be having? He said, little girl. He went into details. So there, that's... All right, hold up a second. If this was before the birth, why the hell did he sign the birth certificate? Now, he believes since the baby was light and the ex was dark, there was no way the ex could be the father. Same time, and then he But you told him he's not the father. I only told him that because he would not give back my child. Why would he just have the baby? He had the baby trying to take the baby so he can be with someone else. He, 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 he used me, baby. She watched too many lifetimes, no, Your Honor. No, he used me, Your Honor. After I had that baby, Your Honor, he proposed to me, told me that we were going to get married, moved in together. He lied took the baby, tried to move away. Well, tried to... He had the baby in his care. He never took her, because I gave her to him. So, okay, so this is the point I'm getting at. Now, you look at this picture, it just looked like a little daddy kissing the baby. It just came out the just room. too new. Oh, so cute. Okay, how did he disappear with a baby without her knowing? Like, how's that even possible? Something ain't that enough. This baby, yes. I asked my brother, why are you dealing with her again? She did this to you nine years ago. 
why are you getting yourself in a situation? We had just lost our father, you know so he grieved into this baby. Girl, okay. It was a grievance, and it was attachment instantly. Like, this is my baby. I think that she's attaching to him financially. It's not for looking for the father of this child. It's about what the baby can get from this man. She knew what she had done. When my brother had this baby, we were, we were going to take it and do what we need to do for the baby. She came to my home, Lying. looking for my brother with her family, throwing things at my window. That's Bring me back my, my baby. baby. That's not his my baby. baby and wouldn't tell me where y'all was at. That's what you... This is some drama, man. These people got some issues, right? So her and her family popped up at her house. Now, Miss Faithful claimed that she'd heard her father saying the baby wasn't Mr. Wilson's, and at the same time was asking why he would take a baby that wasn't his. We didn't have any contact. We have no contact. I don't even got Janeiro's number now. He is lying. But my point is, has it ever been stated that the Kaya no. is not his child? No, it has yes, not. It has. Not, no. not by me. No. All right, thank you so much, uh, Miss Faithful. You may. Be he clearly wants to be the kid's father, considering the fact that it was planned too. His doubts are understandable, though. He requested that his name be removed from the birth certificate if the baby turns out not to be his. Has been determined by this court. Mr. Wilson, you are not <laughs> the father. <laughs> Miss Faithful Stop. Thank you, Jesus. I apologize for taking you through this, but I am gonna find out who her father is, and I am gonna. You gotta find out. No, when I say find <laughs> you gotta out, find I'm out. gonna bring him on this courtroom like I did you. At. Imagine finding out you might be a possible dad on Facebook, except you ain't the only one. A picture collage is what you saw of other possible fathers. And man, that chick looked like she been a village bicycle man because everybody don't have a ride. Alright, then we got another man who's refusing to pay child support for his twins, claiming one of them ain't his. These are the most shocking paternity court moments. Alright, so a woman's reached a critical point in her life where she's got no choice but determine which of the two men she been banging is the biological father of her two-year-old. Now, she believes the kid looks more like Mr. Smith, who's one of the possible fathers. Unfortunately for Mr. Moronis, as she speaks and testifies, his greatest fears are coming to life. You know, side by sides of, of Mr. Smith and, you know, there's a lot of resemblance. I mean, look. I don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, we definitely need to hear from Mr. Smith to make things a little bit clear, and he admitted straight up to tapping that piece. The way that he could be the father since he didn't complete the act, right? He also believes that he and the kid have a little bit of resemblance. But Jordan was born on May 1st. So counting back, that's almost a full year. So this kid doesn't turn out to be Mr. Smith's. No child deserves a dad who rejects him even before seeing him that Mr. Morones. Now in this episode of Paternity Court, a man refused to pay child support for his twins after he discovered he was not the only man paying to support the babies. I have three children. My oldest boy plays football. I need help. If I can't do it for the kids, if they need something. If I can't do it, I ask Mr. Little. If Mr. Little can't do it, somebody still got to do it. But do the other men think they're the father? No, ma'am, absolutely not. The other men, this is the thing. You trying to like me, you trying to come into my life, you say you want to be with me. I'm not an ugly person. You're liking me. If you like me, show me. Prove it to me. Me and my kids need some help. So if you like me, I'd like that you would help me. Mr. Little, don't let the name fool you, ladies, believes these other men believe they're the father of the kid. Now, they met a few years ago, and he was her personal mechanic, you know, helping look for her car. He, he lied and led me on. He led me to believe that he was single and that he was all for me. Thanksgiving, he was at my house. I made a joke to him, like, what would you do if I got pregnant? Just joke. And he was like, you can't do that. And I'm like, why? He said, because my wife would divorce me. A wife? Oh! I'm like, Boy. what is that? When did you get Boy, one no. of them? Wait a minute now, Mr. Little, now you had... Now, he claims that he and his wife were separated at the time. Now, he'd think after this news that she wouldn't see him again, but she claimed she only saw him to get her car worked on. This is all I got. I, I, I said, matter of fact, my dead words is, I really need to keep this. Judge. Mr. Judge. Little. This, that's not true. That's not true. Yes, it is. That's not yes, true. it is. You trading yes, is. car services for yes, bedroom is. services? No, you ever pay for your car repairs? She didn't get a car repair, you know? For what he had to done to my car. I left with my car, and I left for Ah, uh, OK, OK. Pain in kind is never an option. All right, now, he claimed he never saw or talked to her after that day. After a month, she called him and told him that she was pregnant. Because I, I've known her in the past, and I know she's not the one to even play like that. So 
how much she loved him, cared for him, wanted to be with him, and uh, I appreciate everything you do for the kids. And I'm like, wow. It came to you. The text came to me, and she was sending to another guy with his name on it. This text? After I got the text, uh -huh. like I say, maybe a day or so went by, I never confronted her that I had gotten the text. I asked her, have they been together? She said, yes. She said, Don't he, lie, thought, you told he thought it was a possibility. Why would he think it was a possibility? But she told me before. After this text, he began to wonder why this other man would think that he could be a possibility. Now she claimed this other man was aware the twins are Mr. Little's and not his. One night he came and brought me some money. I asked Mr. Little for some things for the kids. Okay, you I, no, it's my turn. I asked him on a Thursday. He didn't come till Sunday that's, to bring. That, he didn't come says, till Sunday to bring the kids I brought, items. I texted him on Thursday. Said the kids need milk and diapers. And I Mr. brought Little, and I brought he, them that on, night. No, he lied. He came on Sunday. He brought a little um, 50 pack of diapers. A 50 for, pack? A 50 for, pack of a pick a pack? He brought, a, he brought a, Exactly. Your Honor, and when I'm, he set it down, he set it down on the big case that somebody had brought. There's just so much drama going on, man. Mr. Little explained that he'd seen a man walk out of the back when he went to drop the diapers and milk off for the kids. Now, she never said nothing to him, so he left. Facebook, this guy is handicapped, walks with a walker, a, a walker and everything. I reached out to him. I said, hey, how you doing? Um, my back against the wall right now. Me and my children ain't got no milk and they ain't got no diapers. Can you help me out? He On said, Facebook, yes. On Facebook, you had to reach out to a man that, that said ask seen... for milk and diapers? Yes, and I, have, I haven't seen this yes. man in a year and a half. And I reached out to this guy because he's real nice. It was always good to me back in the day. So I reached out to him. That man so came over out, instant. Wait, wait, wait. And you reached stuff. out. So basically, if she can't do it and he can't do it, then somebody got to do it. But honestly, that shouldn't be the case. The two individuals that made the baby should be the one to do it. I mean, pretty only goes so far. Ron Clifton, Ashanti is my daughter. Hello, ma'am. What would you like to add? What do you know about this situation? Sam started out being a proud father. And I think jealousy raised this ugly head, which made him stop. You know, I taught my daughter to be self-sufficient. And if you, if one won't, the other one will. To do what we are duty-bound to do. And that's raise them beautiful twin. Your and his old long head, no, nope, I've always, his I've always. Regardless of the fact that he was married, he signed a birth certificate making him the father legally by law. Why would you do this? I incurred three infections at the hospital having his kids. I almost lost my life. I had to be in the hospital for a week. And so he, he took me down there to the place where we had to get it done, paid the money for the birth certificates, paid money to expedite it. He paid an extra $30 to expedite this so we could be done. Eight. There's been so much up and down here, man. Like, she also claimed that apart from the already mentioned events, there are no other possible fathers. Well, hopefully that's true because she's pretty confident. Chains to six-month-old twins, King and Kalani Little, mm -hmm. Mr. Little, you are not. 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 Now here's another jaw-dropping moment of truth on paternity court. A man had a one-night stand with a co-worker who then conceived a kid. Now due to this, he's in some pretty financial shambles caused by child support for a kid he doesn't believe is his. My, my checks is only $40 to $50 every two weeks because my child, child support is getting taken out. So you are having child support garnished from your checks. Right. And this is causing problems in your marriage. Right. But you do not think this child is yours. No. Ms. Forrester, you put him on child support. Yes, ma'am. You gave his name to the court. Yes, ma'am. Now, a letter was sent to his old house stating that he had to go to court. Now, he never found out until about a month later. The next thing he knows, he's getting put on child support. I mean, I ain't signed no birth well, certificate. I ain't doing, I mean. Well, you were named the father by default because you didn't show up to court. The address they had of record, the notice went there. You say you had moved, right. but they sent it to probably your last known address. And then because you didn't show. Now she claimed that he didn't request a DNA test until two years ago. Now it appears that he's got a court date in a month stating that he might be sent to jail for six months. All for a child that you don't believe is your biological child. Exactly. Because you missed a court date. Ms. Forrester, you say you initially said he was not the father. Right. Then you changed it. Yes, ma'am. How did that happen? Because Miss. Hernandez came up to me and asked me if he was the father. I didn't want to cause any problems between their relationship, so I told her, no, he wasn't the dad. You were in a having a relationship with Mr. Quarles. Man, how the hell does that even happen, right? They worked together, and according to her, he came up to her, flirted just a little bit, and asked for her phone number, which she gave to him. 
So how often were you having sex with her? It was it was just a one night stand. On one time. One it time. was not, ma'am. I took a lie detector test. Wait, you're saying that it was more than one time? Yes, ma'am. And you asked the court to administer a lie detector test? Yes, ma'am. Jerome, do we have those results? Yes, we do. All right, so she met with a court's licensed polygraph expert and she believed that she passed. Well, <laughs> let's find out if she really did or not. The questions were as follows. Ms. Forrester, you were asked, have you slept with Yura Quarles, that's Mr. Quarles, more than one time? You said yes, and the lie detector determined that was the truth. Mr. Quarles, maybe you need to rethink this relationship. She may not know who she was sleeping with and just called him all year since she's saying she only did, was with one black man, but other black men at the same job. Well, I guess she must have missed that one. Even with the information he just heard, he still maintained that he slept with her just once. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And how often during that three month time were you intimate? About five to eight times. So you're pregnant. You tell Mr. Quarles it's his child? Yes. What was she his told response? The whole first. No, I told Yuri first. He came over that night and I showed him five different pregnancy mm -hmm. tests. No, no, that's a lie. It's and you lie. told him? I told him that I was pregnant and he said that he takes care of his not to worry. No, the whole workplace. All right, so he confronted her on finding out that she was pregnant. Now he asked that the kid was his and she claimed that she had told him that the baby was indeed his. One girl came to me the day after she told everybody when we came back from out of town, she, came, she said, I can't be like everybody else. I'm gonna tell you the truth. And she told me, she was just saying that was Yuri's baby that she's pregnant by. She told you she's running around saying he is her child's father. And then she got pregnant in the back seat. Mind you, he, had, he has a CD out, a song called Back Seat. All right, dude's a real player. Like, just when you think it can't get any worse, he claimed that two other guys at his place of work had walked up to him to tell him that they had nailed her, too. It wasn't but me by myself. But you had morals, and you had morals when it came to me asking you I to didn't tell want to hurt the your truth. feelings either. You seem like a pretty nice lady. Why would I want to say he was sleeping with me? And again, if I'm a nice lady... I said you seem like a nice lady. Let's talk about morals, man. They both don't have any. Like, he's cheating, and she's also aware that he was in a relationship before sleeping with him. That's not why I slept with him, that's for sure. While you're having this child, is Mr. Quarles helping you, participating in the no. pregnancy? Was he there at the birth? No. Nothing? No. So, Sierra's born, and you're still by yourself? Yes. Does he participate at all? He's only seen her three times since she's been born. And she's four now. Yes, ma'am. Did you tell Miss Quarles, did you tell his wife you were taking the child to see him? I do not believe Miss Quarles knew that we he was seeing her. All right, so he brought his mom to court as a witness and she doesn't believe that the kid is her grandkid. When they first went to the child support office, where I was in the courtroom and uh, well, where I was sitting there, I heard her over say like, it might not be uh, my son's child. So I was like, why? You know, I, I really got kind of upset. But I, now you're saying it's not my son's child. And now, now we're sitting here all this time, this longer time, and you're saying it's not his? And I, I just couldn't understand it. So Doesn't you don't like. think? Now, of course, she's going to straight up deny saying that, right? At this point, there's really no reason to lie about anything considering that there's a kid involved. Mr. Quarles. You are the father. That's good. All right, so a man and his mom's come to court to prove that although he's been helping her take care of a woman's six other kids, he's not the father of her three-month-old son. When today's DNA results prove you are not the father, you are seeking $1,500 for housing and child care expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Milan, though you do admit to cheating on Mr. Jones with another man, you say you're unsure if you were already pregnant when you cheated. Yes, Your Honor. You say you're here today to prove to Mr. Jones and his meddling mother once and for all that Mr. Jones is without a doubt. Now, Ms. Jones claims that she doesn't believe the kid is her son because she'd contacted the court three days after the baby was born. Now, she'd watched her son break down at the hospital as he was going to be devastated if the kid wasn't his. Her mother and my mother was neighbors. When she moved back home with her mom, uh, her mom used to talk to her about me or whatever like that. And then how this relationship began? When I first, you know, moved home with my mom, I noticed him. She was like, you know, this Mr. Jones, he lived next door. We started, you know, just 
on a friendly note, you know, hey, how you doing? We'll sit down, we'll talk, laugh, joke. I'll go back in, tend to my kids. See, she was entertaining the notion despite the age difference because Evie came closer to her boys and she also enjoyed the interaction and happening as there was someone there as a father figure for her kids. Friends, like I said, and then we just eventually did have sexual relations. I didn't take it, you know, serious at the time I was with my ex at the time, so. Oh, you were? You yeah, were still so, with your ex? Yeah, that's so that's when I kind of, you know, leaned back off of Mr. Jones. But eventually I seen how I was feeling about Mr. Jones. Even after we had sex or whatever, he was like, he was looking at it as a friendship. But my thing was, I don't have sex with my friends. I thought it was more. She claimed to have discussed the consequences of sleeping with each other without protection, but according to her, he always said he couldn't have kids. So oh. during a physical, they told you you would be unable to have children? Yes, ma'am. Judge, it was at a point where uh, they had got to the point where they were serious to the point enough for her and her kids to have anywhere to go. So I offered for her and her kids to come to my house. That's how I thought that they were in a relationship with So you me. thought they were in a relationship? Yes, yeah, Because it, it, when it, her, time she relationship. and her children didn't have anywhere to go, uh -huh. you said they could come and stay with you? Yes, ma'am. So her lawsuit stated that she's suing for 1500 bucks for rent money that Ms. Milan owes her for staying at her house. But in her testimony, she just stated that she'd invited her to come stay with her because she had nowhere else to go. That's two different stories entirely. And your son was living there with Ms. Milan and the children yes. at first? Yes. He when, left. When I left, I didn't, I didn't come back home from the bar. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute. What happened so was now... she ended up going through my phone or whatever like that, and she got... And she seen that I, I ended up conversating with my ex, so we, they started an argument. So I left that day. And when I left, I went to a bar with my friend or whatever like that, and my ex so happened to uh, appear there. Man, he should have thought about what he was getting into before stepping into it, man. Like, Ms. Jones felt like she was trying to trap her son because she stopped taking her birth control. Although she said that he was making her sick. And so how did you find out she was pregnant? She called, she called and told me. I was with my ex. She called and Is told me. Is it still your ex when you back, back up, with her? I I'm gonna tell you. Oh, she's still with my ex. We wasn't together. When, when I when I was with my ex, she, we wasn't together. It just we had we, we had a, a well, long we separated. I lived. relationship. I didn't All run right. back. So get to the pregnancy part. <laughs> okay. Okay. She was she called, she said she was three and a half weeks pregnant. I was like, by who? You think he was smart enough to use them? <sighs> nah, he wasn't, right? When he found out that she was pregnant, he stepped up. Now, he wanted to be there all through it all if there was a possibility that the kid was his. You know what I'm saying? I did everything. You no, know, take care of the boys, make sure they going to school. He I was, you no, know, feeding her, doing the cleaning. Yeah. So did you ever tell the ex that he potentially could be the father too? I told him first. You know, he was, I was around him at the time. I was feeling sick and I was like, you know, I knew I hadn't been out there that long also. But I did go to the store and get a pregnancy test and it came out positive. I ended up telling Mr. Jones also, and you know, he did his talking or whatever, but he ended up texting and was like, okay, regardless of what, you know, if this my child, I do want to be around. Let me know when you go to. Now he was there participating like the dad, but he didn't sign the birth certificate because he wanted the DNA test first. I gotta say, bruh, you smart. And during that time is around the time that she got pregnant. And she came to give her condolences and everything, but she came with another man. I drove. And on another occasion, I was she, uh, uh, I'm at a friend's oh. house playing dominoes. It's a guy come, come come to that house. We It's like a different street. This guy come knocking on the door looking for her. And I'm like, okay, you on the wrong side. See, I had my doubts because, you no, know, the doctor told me I wouldn't be able to have kids. You know and so saying? between you seeing her with other men, she submitted a calendar outlining the dates they were intimate, which was June 28th. And next it shows, in yellow, where you went for your ultrasound on August the 8th. Mm -hmm. They told you you I were... Was five weeks and four days. You were five weeks and four days. So if you count back five weeks and four days... All right, I see you've had sex with Mr. Jones. Now, your ex, did you have sex with him sometime during that window? I want to say maybe two or three to three days after the 4th of July. All right, so the big question is... Does he hope the kid is his since he claimed to have loved the kid since the day he was born? Now, he revealed that he loved her kids too and values the relationship that he got with them. So he was always there for them? He was always there for them, even when we were just friends. So, in addition to the $1,500 you're suing for, you also have spent money on diapers, wipes, formula, Clothes, onesies, anything I thought he would care need, items, have. and you've provided the court with these receipts today. 
Alright man, the only end of this mess is for the results to be in his favor, so let's find out how it's going down. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jones, you are not the father. 